When most of us think of the post office, we just think about delivering mail or buying stamps. But in reality, the post office is so much more than that. People depend on the United States Post Office for many important deliveries, like social security checks, medicine, and important documents of that nature. Additionally, however, there is another side to how the post office benefits America than just what the public needs. The post office also provides good, steady work with good benefits that's accessible to people of all levels of education. It's often known as a path to the middle class. Keith Richardson, the current president of the Chicago Postal Workers Union, is a third generation postal worker who benefited greatly from the job's accessibility. Just look at myself. Um, my grandmother, she worked for the Postal Service back in the 40s and 50s. My uncles worked for the post office with only a high school education. Um, I graduated on a Wednesday. I started working for the post office the next Monday, 1992. I've been working here for, for 28 years now. So this is definitely a path to the middle class. I've been able to purchase a home, cars. This experience is shared by Wanda, a recently retired post office employee who's choosing to remain anonymous by providing a steady income and everything. You know, I've been able to purchase my home and go on vacations, you know, purchase a car if I needed a car, or whatever it was that I needed to do. The post office is also a tool of equity because they deliver to any address in the United States no matter what. Without the post office, you don't have universal service. There, today, somebody took a donkey down into the Grand Canyon and delivered mail. They took a hydroplane into a lake in Alaska to deliver mail. This gives everyone, no matter how remote the area they live in is, an important public service. It is reliable. When everything is put into place and running like it should, then you don't have to leave your home or anything to go out to necessarily get your mail or whatever is brought there to you daily. We go to every door in this country, no matter where you're at, no matter if it makes money, because we're a service. So the post office doesn't just deliver mail. It also provides people with essential medication and social security checks, quality employment, and serves as a tool of equity through universal service. Right now, the post office is under threat. The Postal Service is a joke. Well, they're not going to get the $3.5 billion, therefore they can't do the universal mail-in vote. Very simple. How are they going to do it if they don't have the money to do it? The nation was warned about a new potential threat to the election. This comes from the U.S. Postal Service. And now there are concerns that cost-cutting at the Postal Service, overseen by a key Trump ally, could undermine postal workers' ability to deliver ballots in time to be counted. Look, I'm very Will you proud. put the machine back? I'm very proud to lead the organization. The rest of your accusations are actually... Will you Put the, will They're you actually put the high-speed machine No, back. I will not. You will not. Will not. You will not. Well, there you go. But why is this happening and what's at stake? It all starts with the appointment of a new Postmaster General by Trump in May of 2020. The appointee, Louis DeJoy, has implemented a series of cuts to the post office, reducing work hours, removing mailboxes, and taking away sorting machines. This has not been making life any easier for the post office workers. We've seen perfectly good machines removed, destroyed, thrown on the scrap heap. And now the machines that are left behind have to work twice as long. They don't have backups when they break down. Post office branches across the country are literally being robbed of all the tools that keep the post office as efficient as it is. Now, imagine a baker being forced to make cakes over a campfire. That would just ruin everything. And that's slowly what this is being turned into. Louis DeJoy was appointed postmaster and started in June. And he instituted a bunch of changes, even though he's never worked in the post office a day in his life. He sent out an edict that said there would be no more overtime, that trucks would leave the plants at a certain time, even if the mail wasn't sorted and put on the truck. So we have empty trucks going from point to point. but. To him, that was efficiency. That's on time. All the advancements we've made over the years to speed up mailing processes is being thrown in the junk. And it's no coincidence that this is happening as DeJoy 
has money invested in a company which rivals the USPS. And it turns out Mr. DeJoy has anywhere from 30 to 70 million dollars in stock in XPO Logistics where he used to run the show. And you know what XPO Logistics does? It contracts out mail sorting for the post office. So it just turns out that once the mail sorting machines are out of the post office and our mail volume goes up during the election and goes up at Christmas, they're going to contract out to companies like XPO. So DeJoy could serve to individually profit off of a weakened post office. And again, all this is being done by a man who hasn't worked in the post office a single day in his life. He's not qualified by any means to be doing this job. I mean, think about it. Would you let a random stranger on the street perform your next surgery? If not, then why are we allowing the government to take control of the post office? And more so, why in the wrong hands? People are also concerned about the mail-in voting happening in November due to the extra process of mail checking and extra difficulties in shipping, which is causing delays to the USPS. Several states have been affected by mail-in delays just this summer. We've seen measures taken to intentionally slow down the delivery of mail and the processing of mail, the moving of mail. However, most workers in the USPS aren't concerned about the post office's ability to handle the increase in mail-in voting due to COVID-19. And because of the virus, people are less likely to vote in person and more likely to vote by mail. For many states though, voting by mail is nothing new. Some states do every election by mail. They have a greater turnout and they have less fraud. Fraud is extremely rare. Like Rebecca is saying, many states during election time are relying on mail-in voting. And if you can send a passport through the mail, you can send a social security card through the mail, you can send stimulus payments through the mail, you can send birth certificates through the mail, you certainly can send a secure ballot through the mail. If these documents can be sent through the mail with no problem, then ballots should also be able to be sent through the mail with no process or hassle. So this is an attack on the vote. It's not partisan. The president is basically using this as a way to slow down and potentially incapacitate the election. President Thursday openly admitting he wants to block funding for the post office to prevent expanded mail-in voting. The postmaster general had a letter sent to 46 states saying, we might not be able to deliver your ballots on time. He didn't put in that letter that the only reason we wouldn't be able to do it on time is because he was intentionally slowing down our mail processing. So Postmaster General DeJoy is on Trump's administration side. By challenging the validity of the post office and mail-in voting, he's challenging the validity of the election process and therefore even democracy itself. This is affecting the post office's reputation. Not only that, but the post office workers are being affected as well. Some workers are being laid off, while others are being forced to work twice as hard. And in the post office, most modern day machines that are being used have either been destroyed or thrown to the scraps. And older machines that are no longer supposed to be used are being forced to work. This is what's causing the delays, which not only affects the citizens of America that rely on the USPS, but also the USPS financially. And this isn't going to stop on November 3rd, the day of the election, because after that, he's going to continue to implement delaying processes. He's going to continue to try to erode the public faith in the post office. All he's going to do is make more cuts to the USPS and cause more of an inconvenience for this organization. What's worse is that there's talk of the post office going under. If they do not change and pick up the customer service for the better and get the processing back to the point where it was in which DeJoy is saying he's not going to put these machines back into the offices that he's taken them out of, then I don't see the post office holding on for too much longer. Most people think that, like we mentioned previously, DeJoy has his eyes set on privatizing the post office. This would mean selling the post office to a company or individual whose main interest is making a profit. Ownership would transfer from the government to the corporate sector. 
the federal government and specifically Donald Trump and uh, Mr. DeJoy are trying to finally privatize the USPS, which is going to be a nightmare. Privatize the USPS would mean that um, rather than this being a service that is guaranteed at like an extensively low rate for all Americans, it would be much, much, much more expensive to do very simple things like mail a letter, send a package to somebody, um, you know, ship all sorts of different things. Um, and I think one of the most significant things that's been concerning is that a lot of people get their different medications through the USPS for a very low price, um, which during a pandemic is not ideal to see happen. And this is also happening right before the election. So uh, yeah, very terrifying. And this is nothing new for seasoned USPS workers. As far back as I can remember, they have always, especially um, the Republicans, they've always tried to find a way to try to privatize the post office. And I think that's one of the things that they're doing now with all the cuts and taking away the machinery and what have you, is they're trying to make it look as if it's going down to kind of support them trying to privatize the post office. But privatizing the post office has huge risks for the public. Let me tell you, if the post office wasn't around to provide these services, the private sector would rip people off. They'd increase rates exponentially. People couldn't afford the services. And it would be an attack on all of our communities. So this is why getting the word out about this situation is so important, as this isn't even being talked about that much. It's necessary to take to the streets to save the Postal Service from cuts, from delays, from a management that wants to destroy it from the inside. In conclusion, the post office is being destroyed from the inside out. From the sorting equipment to the employee policies, Postmaster General DeJoy has disrupted the mail service. Either this will get better or it will get worse. But as Rebecca said, if the post office went under today, I think they kind of have someone in mind to come in and buy out the post office. We should be concerned about the post office being threatened because it threatens people's livelihoods. It attacks accessible, high quality jobs. It threatens to erode a social glue that keeps the most isolated members of our community connected. But also, the privatization of the mail service could be a slippery slope. If the post office gets privatized, what could be next? Public education? Think about it. What if you had to pay extremely high public school tuition to the point where community college and Ivy League schools are in the same price range? It would be so much harder to get an education for most people. Now imagine if the prices of public transit and hospitals also skyrocketed due to privatization. This is the same thing that could happen to the price of a letter, of a stamp, of the cost of getting your medication to your home at low rates. Regardless of like, the candidates, I think that no matter what, like our democracy is at stake, whether or not we have a postal service that works for everybody and is available to everybody. And so, you know, whatever it takes, um, election or not, it's something that we should care about. That's not even an exaggeration. The post office is just the beginning. And if we let them get their way with it now, they'll just do it again, but it'll be easier for them the next time. But just because it's the beginning, doesn't mean it has to be the first. We still have a shot at making a change, so why not give it that shot that it deserves? For young people especially, whether you're in high school or if you're um, slightly older, if you're in college or if you're just starting to work, um, you have to understand that these fights seem really broad and nationwide, but they happen uh, in a space that's close to you and locally to you. Um, the war that is between USPS and the private corporate sector of America um, there are just similar wars and battles happening in your community if you look for them. Uh, look to support unions in your area. If there are not unions, ask why there's not. If you go to a school and your teachers are not unionized, or if you're, there's not a, a, a student union at your college, that's something that you can start, you can start working on. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that if there is injustice against a group of workers like the post office somewhere, it's bound to be that it's elsewhere, it's everywhere. So this is something you need to organize in every realm of your life. That means your, your community, that means your school. Voting is just one drop in a large bucket that you can use to douse people like Louis DeJoy and the corporate sector of America into giving up their war on working people.